Right, back live with you tonight. Take your in focus and thanks uh, for staying on. You can weigh in on our conversations, by the way, tonight on 072-110-584. Drop us a message on X at Newsroom uh, 405. We stay with the uh, big developments of uh, the weekend within the African National Congress where former leader of the party uh, has announced that he will not be putting his weight behind the party, instead lending his support to a new formation that uh, seeks to borrow a brand of uh, uh, Umkonto Wesis, a political commentator, Mbazi Mashilo, he himself, a uh, former member of uh, the organization, joining us to weigh in on the implications of uh, this decision. Good to have you, sir, and thank you very much uh, for your time. I, I'm uh, leaning on, on your knowledge here, particularly because you have seen previously a kind of uh, massive break away within the African National Congress in, in, in the form of the Congress of the People. One, it, it has a prominent leader within the organization, others would say, with significant support in Gwazulu Natal and in other parts. Two, it, 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 it has uh, wounded soldiers attached to it who, one might even say, have the ability uh, to mobilize that could sympathize with this former leader. Three, it wants to borrow, similar to the Congress of the People, on a recognizable brand of the organization uh, called Umkonto Wesizo. All those put together, uh, and of course, the dwindling support of the ANC, are they a making of a massive breakaway within the party? Yes, good evening to you and to the viewers. I don't know if it's really the making of a breakaway because in reality, uh, no one knows at the moment uh, that party called uh, MK that uh, former President Jacob Zuma spoke about, what structures does it have, who the leadership is, is he himself part of that leadership even as he says, He's not leaving the ANC. So I am not sure I would call it a, a major breakaway. And I'll tell you why. Firstly, because the people who would be registering that MK uh, party, um, you know, would have been part of what uh, I would call a parallel structure, which did not have any traction. Uh, to be able to sway both the MK conference that took place as well as the ANC conference uh, itself. Secondly, it is true that um, a figure such as former President uh, Jacob Zuma saying that he's not going to vote for the ANC may have an impact, may maybe in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, but maybe not. In KwaZulu Natal, because many people think that's where his base is, but if you look at the fact that he has not been able to really, beyond what happened in 2009, bring on board more uh, supporters, even in his own uh, area of Nkanda, with people in local government voting for the IFP. So I'm not sure if that will be an impact. Secondly, if you look at um, the metros in Houting as well as the Nelson Mandela Bay, all of those were lost while he was still um, uh, the president of the ANC and of the country. So it may be that uh, we exaggerate the hold that he may have, but obviously time will tell, but I personally don't think beyond uh, a splintering in KZN is going to have an impact, say, in Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Northwest, which is really where the ANC needs to win and win better to be able to reach uh, 50% plus one. Whereas in Houting, whether or not they win or lose, it won't be because of uh, President Zoma but it will be because the voters in this area have either deserted the ANC or have been staying home for quite a long time. Yeah. Is former President Zuma waging a political war, maybe if you want to push it, 
a political revolution because you know generally when they speak of these political campaigns they say first you will wage them on the streets um, if you are unsuccessful or maybe even simultaneously wage them in our courts uh, if all that fails, then you'd rather take them uh, to, to the ballot box because uh, these are all the areas where a, a, a revolution uh, would be waged. Yes, uh, obviously, uh, the ballot box will be the most important one. And I think that's really a gamble because, as I'm saying, I don't know if that structure itself has, uh, as we speak today, any structures on the on the ground. With regard to that he's waging a political battle, yes, he's waging a political battle firstly against uh, President uh, Ramaphosa, but secondly against uh, the very same party that he says uh, he is still uh, committed to. But you've got to bear in mind that, uh, you know, uh, you know, in my view, President Zuma have long left the ANC in reality, in the sense that he has been waging that battle that you're speaking about from after he lost the, um, I mean, not him, but the people who were backing lost in 2017, mm. and even now in uh, at the last uh, conference, that those people that he were backing would have lost. He have tried to take uh, President Ramaphosa to court. All of those have failed. And I think, so if you were to really ask me, I don't think it has got anything to do with the ANC. It has to do with him and uh, Ramaphosa in that, even though it was President Zuma and his people who went to get um, President uh, Ramaphosa away uh, to bring him as their deputy president because they didn't want to lose to Halima Mbutlante, who was challenging Zuma at the moment. And they thought, well, if we can't have him as a deputy, uh, that is uh, Mbutlante, we might as well get uh, Ramaphosa. The very same people who brought him are the very same people who raise issues about him. Also, if you look into some of the things that uh, former President Zuma is raising, say the land question, for instance. In 2014, the EFF offered the ANC its uh, percentage to say, together we have two-thirds, let's deal with the issue of the land. He was the president. He did not take that issue. He only started raising that issue of uh, let's work with the EFF only once uh, he was about to lose uh, his uh, position. So, you know, yes, it's a battle, but um, I don't think it's one in which he's going to win. Obviously, for the people of South Africa, uh, they should not concern themselves with is what is happening inside the ANC. They should ask themselves, with um, the elections that are coming, what is it that we can do? How can we vote in a manner that, in their view, will ensure that the 1994 uh, promises are being kept? If they think the ANC will keep them, they should vote for the ANC. If they think other parties uh, in opposition, whether it's the EFF, HNSAA, or whoever, will help them with that, that's really what they should do. But I don't think the President uh, Zuma saying, let's not vote for the ANC, that in itself is what is going to sway people, and that, that's really what the focus should yeah. be. Because then we become involved in the machinations inside the ANC, rather than worrying about where is the country going to. And I would argue, everyone is agreed that, look, if we look at poverty, unemployment, inequality, those uh, are the challenges that we face. And those challenges are not because of uh, President Ramaphosa. They are about, they are because of the ANC. Those things were there even when uh, President uh, Zuma was there. In fact, he came in on a ticket in which 
Kosatu, the SACP, thought he is a left-leaning uh, uh, candidate. Many of us knew that, look, Zuma is no left-leaning uh, candidate. He is part of the ANC establishment, and all it shows is that the ANC is continuing as an establishment uh, party. Whether uh, Ramaphosa is there, even if you bring in somebody else, very little is going to change. And Zuma saying he is going to vote for a different party that he says progressive, in my view, is not going to make any difference because yesterday, other than the criticizing the very same thing that he himself was doing, he did not spell out what is this left agenda that he thinks we need to be able to do. If you were to ask him, what is your economic policy? It will be the same as it was when he was there as the president. What is your socio-economic policy be, uh, and social policy? Beyond the issues of social grant, he is not going to tell you what the position is. Any developments within the African National Congress, especially this past week, the U-turn by the ANC veteran Mavusom Sima after engagement uh, with the party on his resignation. Then this weekend, former President Jacob Zuma announcing that he, in his conscience, cannot lie to the people of South Africa and say to them they must vote for this ANC of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. He will be putting his support and his weight behind a new formation called the Umkonto Wesizwe Party. Now, Papa there, 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 there is a lot of what we call political competition uh, currently in, in the country, where in some instances it is viewed as it generally should be to improve government's responsiveness, uh, uh, just as it happens, I suppose, in, in economic markets when there's more competition and you get a, a benefit for the consumers. However, former President Jacob Zuma says, oh, I've engaged about 10 or so parties and I'm, I'm going to engage even more because I believe it's time to form a patriotic front that is going to steer the ship to total liberation. I'm sure you would remember when that kind of formation happened in, in the past. Is the environment ripe right now for a formation of that nature? Let me just say that uh, leave aside patriotic. A front suggests that uh, all the various parties will contest under one banner. And I think if I listen to what uh, former President Zuma was talking about, is that each of the various parties will contest alone in the hope that each one will get one plus one plus one plus one and a little bit more in terms of the EFF because I think it's a, it's a better formation uh, of what he may want to be able to bring uh, together. But it is not about saying we will be under one single banner. Similar with what uh, the multi-party um, uh, thing of the DA, the charter, in SAA, and others, yeah, the multi-party charter. Even them, it's about one plus one, but maybe two and three there and there. That, for me, is not what a front is all about. A front is when you bring everybody and say, let's contest under one banner, under one party. That's what the ANC did bringing the various Bantustan parties, it would have preferred to bring in the PAC and Azapo as well and contest as one. Similarly, if you look at uh, how people in Malawi and in uh, Zambia were able to win, is because they were able to contest as one single group. The notion that, um, you know, President Zuma will bring a few people together, parties, and that uh, the DA will bring together single parties, all that is going to happen is that they will, they will still have a fewer numbers than the ANC. And their aim is not to win the elections. It's about bringing the ANC, say, below uh, 50, which may or may not happen, because even as the ANC is uh, wounded, but I think that uh, people underestimate the capacity of the ANC to mobilize in the sense that, you know, other than the DA and the EFF, 
the ANC have um, branches across everywhere. And these new parties that are being formed, not all of them will have all of that. And to an extent that, that they are each fighting one as a whole, it's about, well, can we snipe at the leg, at the, um, at the arm and all of that. It's not about we are going to eat this elephant and bring it down immediately. The state capture inquiry and the report thereafter and its handling, do you think, even though the ANC would have said to us at the time that the ANC is not on trial, it is becoming the Achilles heel that could lead to the downfall of the ANC because it seems a lot of the fights that are happening within the organization right now, whether you are looking at Mahashule, whether you're looking at uh, former President Jacob Zuma, whether you're looking uh, 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 at Sevin um, they all are emanating out of this state capture process. I think the downfall of the ANC, if it happens, it won't be because of what people say about the individuals uh, in terms of uh, state capture. It will be about the overall view of the people that uh, the ANC enables uh, corruption with some of its leaders being corrupt, that many people don't have water, don't have sanitation, and that uh, a number of schools uh, still have uh, pit latrines and all of those issues. It will be about daily uh, bread and butter issues that people are concerned about that rather than the palace uh, politics inside the the ANC. Yes, there are people who are said to have been corrupt, and I think if the ANC was serious, it would take action against uh, those people. But I think even if it was to take action against those people, if the ANC is not going to improve on service delivery, is not going to improve the economy uh, growing. I mean, the economy is growing at less than 1%. More than uh, 50% of um, the youth are unemployed. Women are unemployed. Rural areas uh, are underdeveloped. It is those people that may decide who are not going to vote for the ANC. But having said that, what may bring the ANC back is not only because of how the ANC will campaign, is because if you look at the offerings about some of the oppositions, beyond pointing out what uh, is mistaken in our country, what the ANC is doing wrongly, which people already know they are not offering that much of an alternative vision that says, if we were to take uh, over from the ANC, this is what we're going to do. Let me give you an example. I would prefer that a party that challenges the ANC would say, here is a budget as we see it today. This is how we are going to reorientate the budget because they are not going to increase the budget. Their resources will still be the same. The tax base will still be the same. They need to say, with the current resources, that we think the ANC is not using. This is how we are going to reallocate the resources to put into infrastructure to create jobs. This will create, uh, will reduce unemployment. This is how we're going to deal with uh, issues of inequality and poverty. Beyond simply saying the ANC is failing, we are going to do better. Unless you tell the people, what are you going to do better than the ANC, other than telling us what is wrong. I don't think that uh, people are going to change their mind. Mazima Shilo, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much sir, for coming on uh, this uh, evening. Uh, that is uh, Mazima Shilo, a political commentator, former member of the African uh, National Congress and of course uh, very active within the labor movement and uh, was instrumental in the formation of COPE saying, well, this does not make for a massive uh, breakaway and uh, not in the current uh, form of events.